Coming up next here on my TV 53 news at eight, according to the chief of police in Selma earlier today, the first ever officer here in Selma killed in the line of duty. We've got team coverage right now. New, local, unique. My TV 53 news at eight starts right now. From my TV 53 news, this is a special report. Good evening and welcome to the San Joaquin Valley's only 8 p.m. news. I'm Austin Reed. We are reporting tonight from Selma, California, where earlier this morning, just before the noon hour, the first ever, according to the chief of police here in Selma, the first ever officer was killed in the line of duty. He was a Selma police officer. Now tonight we are standing right in front of the Fresno County Sheriff's Office Command Center. You can see that the crime scene tape is still up at this hour. This whole situation caused Eric White Elementary School here in Selma to go on a lockdown for a number of hours. No kids were hurt. But let's start with the latest from Fresno County Sheriff John Zanoni alongside the Chief of Police in Selma with more information. Today at approximately 1145, one of our officers was flagged down in the 2600 block of Pine Street. The uh, person that flagged down our officer advised that the suspect was suspicious and unknown to the area. Our, as our officer exited his patrol vehicle and made contact with the suspect, the suspect shot him several times uh, and then fled the area. Our officers arrived on scene shortly after and began life-saving efforts. Our officer was transported to CRMC uh, trauma for his injuries and unfortunately succumbed to his injuries a short time ago. The Fresno County Sheriff's Office will be conducting this investigation. What I will say is, as a precaution, we have an Eric White Elementary School, which is located approximately one mile from the scene of this incident. Uh, that school is locked down as a precautionary measure to ensure the safety of our children. <clears throat> After a short search uh, of the area with Selma Police Department, Fresno County Sheriff's Department, and multiple local agencies, uh, the Sheriff's Office, a, a Sheriff's Department deputy located the suspect and he was taken into custody. I will tell you that the officer was shot more than once, uh, for the record. But at this point, we're still in the preliminary stages, and we're still gathering information. We still have witnesses out there and other people that we need to talk to. So yes, magic was out here. But when the call for help came in, it was all the resources that we could provide to get to this location and ensure that the officer got the care that he needed and that the suspect was apprehended. And I believe we accomplished both of those. Unfortunately, uh, the officer did not survive his injuries even after going to CRMC. Uh, there, is, there is a gang connection to this, and uh, we'll release more on that at a later date. But uh, we're working on that right now to tie up the ends as far as what, when, where, and how, and just really trying to wrap our minds around why this happened today, uh, why this individual decided to take on one of the police officers who's here to protect our community in such a senseless act of violence, uh, probably for an individual who should have been in jail or in prison. Um, he was wanted by probation. He had failed to appear for probation appointment back on January 17th of 2023, and along with his priors for possession of a firearm being a felon and armed robbery. Uh, this is the sad end result to Kind of a worst case scenario what happens when these individuals are out in our community this is a suspect that we've dealt with in the past and had law enforcement contact uh, prior to today's incident how will you guys support the selma police department the sheriff's office what's the plan with this now moving forward so we, we actually will be meeting uh, this evening with all of our personnel at least we've invited all of our personnel to an undisclosed location we'll have peer support chaplains uh, and then just uh, talk amongst ourselves and 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 game plan on how we how we uh, come together and, and then continue to provide exceptional law enforcement services to the citizens of Selma. 
uh, the officer was in the area and while he was patrolling this area, he was contacted by a neighbor regarding a suspicious person that uh, the individual had seen in their yard at the point that he saw them and attempted to make contact. That's when the shooting occurred. I'd just like to add that uh, for our citizens here in Selma to please uh, just be vigilant, continue to please call us. Uh, right now, more than ever, uh, our community needs to come together and pray for our officer's family and pray for our, our, our organization uh, that we can and, and that we will uh, come together, uh, become stronger, and again, work together with our community to provide the safest environment for our children and for our community members. I believe that in a case like this, when you have the senseless, needless, violent killing of a police officer, I believe that they should be eligible for the death penalty. Uh, these are individuals that need an extra layer of protection, being police officers and law enforcement and deputy sheriff, because they put their lives on the line every day to make sure that we have a safe community where we can work and live. And they take that risk every minute, every hour of their shift, and they need that extra protection so they don't become victimized by senseless violence like we saw here today in the city of Selma. I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm horrified right now. As a police chief uh, leading uh, those people that, that are, are tasked with providing a safe environment for our community members, um, this, is, this is the worst case scenario for a chief and for a leader. Um, I would kind of echo what the sheriff said is, it appears from the surface that this was all avoidable, and that's the unfortunate part. At some point, we have to start being mindful as citizens. We all have a part to keep our community safe and, 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 and taking responsibility for our actions. You know, we're always uh, criticizing law enforcement for the things that we don't do well or when we, when we have issues or concerns or the community has issues and concerns. Well, I think it's time to start asking those questions of our community members. Right, and looking at looking at ourselves because police policemen are, are, are born and raised in our communities all over the all over the nation. Right, they bring those experiences into uh, their profession, and, and it, it, it's appalling. It's appalling to watch what's going on, and 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 not having a different narrative as how we fix it together as a community, not just government, but community as a whole because we are a community, right? So. What I'll say is that uh, he was a phenomenal young man, great smile, always a positive attitude. Um, just always at beat. Um, you know, that, that's what I'll say. We didn't just lose a police officer, we lost a great human being. And, and that's the unfortunate part. Because at the end of the day, He's one of our community members. Now, we also spoke with a parent who was steps away from Eric White Elementary School, anxiously waiting to pick up her kindergartner. Let's hear from her now. As a parent, I know as a parent, this must have just been. Yes, I, awful. I couldn't think I couldn't think what was going on just with the helicopter and seeing all the cops everywhere. I was at Fort Forlés and I seen them all smashing, but they didn't know that it was gonna be here at the school. And then when I seen the helicopter going around the block, I was like, "It's the school! It's the school! It can't be anywhere else but the school." How yeah. was how was the information from the school, from the district, from the police? How how did I mean? Was I called, it good? I called so many times that I didn't. They didn't get any answer. But then one of my brothers from Kingsburg called me saying that this was happening. And since people have Facebook, people have like, <laughs> I don't have Facebook myself. But other people around me were like, this is what's going on and I'm pregnant. So she's like, stay calm, don't don't think anything of it. It was a cop, not the kids. Which I was like, Phew. but then again, it's not. Because the cops are also, you know, there to protect the kids. But still, it's still bad because if the, the security is getting affected, what are the, about the kids? So it's, it's actually really scary. How, how long have you been here? 
In Selma? No, no, just today. When did you arrive? Oh, no, I live a block away. Okay. So I've been here just right now. And then I seen this line, I got more scared, thinking, well, is it really the kids going on? Or, But hopefully nothing with them. Yeah, it's scary, though. And especially in 2023. Oh, you yeah. know, we look at Uvalde, which happened, what, a year and a half ago? Yeah. Oh, it's scary. It's scary because, you know, a kindergarten won't be able to defend himself or even, even to duck or even to know what to do. So it's super scary. I never talked to her about the situation. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a number one situation. Um, to talk about situation to do what to do next or what to do in a case like this. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Coming up next here on the news at eight from Selma, we're going to go one on one with an eyewitness who says he saw the suspect inside a police cruiser. Also ahead, we have new video tonight from the procession. Stay with us. This is breaking news from My TV 53 News. My TV 53 alongside Sewell News arrived here in Selma right around 1230. And I spoke with an eyewitness. His name is Fernando and he's a student at Fresno City College. Well, he tells me that he actually saw the suspect inside a police vehicle. Let's hear what he had to say now. From what I know so far, I was coming back from class. I saw everyone on the highway zooming over here, and I was getting home, trying to use the restroom. Everything was blocked off, the whole block and everything. And as I get here, I just ask around. I hear one of the officers got shot, and then I continue to call my friends and everything. One advises me that one could be a potential uh, gang member from one of the shootings. And from what I've seen, I think just a, a Mexican looked like he was in his 40s in the back of a police car, being one of the shooters, and pretty much all for right now. Have you ever seen something like this? Mm, no, but yeah, around Salma, around these towns, yeah, it does get kind of dangerous. It's kind of, it's kind of likely to happen, but just to be ready for it, just be safe. Now, Make when when you were when you were driving and kind of seeing some of this, what was going on in your head? What was going through your mind? Mm, I was just wondering, all these kids, and obviously we're around here at an elementary school, Eric White potentially very dangerous, especially being right next to it, and just all the families around the homes, and then everyone, yeah, could be suffering, worrying about their kids, trying to get back to their grandparents and stuff, yeah. Now, this started at, what, around 12.30, that's when the school went officially on lockdown. Where were you at that time? I was on the freeway heading back, and yeah, as I got here, I noticed everything was locked up, closed down, and yeah, they're doing the shutdown around the houses and stuff. Now, if you are just joining us, let's bring you up to date. Around 11.45 a.m. today, a homeowner flagged down a Selma police officer patrolling the 2600 block of Pine Street regarding a man being on her property. As the officer went to make contact, the man fired several shots, striking the officer. The armed suspect ran from the scene. Selma police officers, Fresno County Sheriff's deputies, Cal Fire firefighters, and Selma EMS responded and gave medical aid to the officer. He was transported to Community Regional Medical Center, and he was taken to surgery and later passed away. Multiple officers and deputies responded to the area. Around 12.10 p.m., a deputy spotted the suspect near Fig and Sequoia, and he was taken into custody. The 23-year-old suspect's gun was later recovered a short distance from where he was arrested. Law enforcement is familiar with this suspect. He has a criminal background, including charges for firearms, possession, and robbery. He has served time in prison and is currently on probation as part of California's AB 109 law, that's prison realignment. Eric White Elementary was temporarily placed on lockdown. Once the situation was deemed safe, students were released to their families. The officer has been with Selma Police Department for two years. This marks the first line of duty death for the Selma Police Department. 
No officers fired their weapons. There are no other outstanding suspects. The names of the officer and suspect are not being released at this time. This remains an ongoing investigation. The Fresno County Deputy Sheriff's Association is supporting the Selma Police Officers Association by establishing a memorial fund in which all donations will be given to the officer's family. Anybody with additional information in this case, ask to call Valley Crime Stoppers at 498-STOP. You can remain anonymous and may be eligible for a cash reward. Coming up next here on the News at 8, we're going to have a look at your weather forecast. Also ahead, we have new video tonight from the procession, which was held in downtown Fresno right around 6 o'clock tonight. This is my TV 53 News at 8. Stay with us. My TV 53 News continues with the Valley's local forecast. It's a year-long project. Tim and Kayla, our two adults, are both participating in it. Hazina is not quite old enough. She's sort of still in training. We have lots of crews back here working together to get as much information on rhinos as we can. So our adult rhinos at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo are participating in the AIRS project. We are lucky enough we get to partner with Dr. Parker Pennington. She's from the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens. Here, Jimmy Jim. This bracelet looks good. The Ayers Project is the American Institute of Rhinoceros Sciences, and it's a collaborative project investigating rhino physiology from a variety of perspectives. Yay, I don't have to weigh anything back or do any more math. <laughs> Look how eager you are to work with Parker. So part of this project was collecting heart rate data on the rhinos. Got his belly real quick, let him roll here. It's made for horses, so it's meant to sort of wrap around the side of the chest and get a heart rate that way. It's been difficult to get on the white rhinos, I think, just because they're so big. The science has proven to be a lot harder than you would think. Those are our muscles. Oh my god. <laughs> Once a month, we're collecting blood just to see how they change over time with the different seasons, um, how different things affect the rhinos. Um, the easiest spot is really their front legs. They have nice big vessels that run down their front legs, and when they stand there and they're busy eating, they've got that nice thick skin, they've got great big vessels. A lot of times they don't even look at you, they don't even stop chewing. We quickly figured out every time we were working with Kayla, her year and a half old calf, Hazina, did not like that mom was getting attention and that she was in the barn by herself and she didn't know what was going on. If she was not part of it, she was in the barn making all kinds of noises and throwing her toys around. She was basically trying to get attention is what she was. So we had to bring her out as well. And here she comes. Hi. And as long as she was out and could see all the people and she was getting attention as well, then she was nice and quiet and she was calm and she stayed out of the way. Yeah, I think you're good now. It's interesting how different both Tim and Kayla are. Tim, he's he's not very reactionary. Kayla, on the other hand, though, is very curious of what goes on. Ah, yeah. Not gonna run around the bone while wearing it today. 
Maybe. We're okay. Maybe. Um, but she has to check out every individual person. She's a little more standoffish at first. She has to kind of approach and come over. It's not so much about the food. It's about her comfort level. So just working with the two of them has been very different. We got our summer projects, all the data all collected. And so Parker will be back out in the winter and we'll collect more data and see how it's different than how they were six months ago. And that's exciting. It has been such a collaboration. It's re-inspired all of us who want to help rhinos. This is really a foundation to know what the next steps of the science are and what the next questions are. This is My TV 53 News. From My TV 53 News, this is a special report. I get your name? Tony Gallegos. So Tony, you came out to the procession this evening. Tell me why. I was at the dentist this afternoon and I got a news feed, a news alert, and I read it at um, one o'clock and it was a, a fallen shooting. And as I come, I was coming to, to my see my doctor over here at the hospital. I seen uh, all the all the police cars and all that. So I knew it was gonna be an escort, so me and my wife got out to honor the fallen officer. And the police chief, along with Fresno County Sheriff John Zanoni, tells us that extra law enforcement will be scattered all across this neighborhood well into tomorrow. We are hoping to learn more information throughout the week. Thank you for joining us from Selma tonight. We'll have more for you tomorrow on My TV 53 News. Good night.